Hey guys, Juan Paberi, and today I'm going to talk to you about what you need to do in order to prepare yourself to live a life as an investor. So let's get to it. So yeah, if you if you like this type of uh, content, if you want to learn more about how to become an investor, buy businesses for a living, and make sure other people run those businesses for you, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I promise you won't regret it. You're going to learn tons. Uh, this is what I'm doing for a living. This is my, what my company is looking for every day. We're looking for businesses to invest in and buy and basically build some kind of portfolio of businesses. Uh, if you obviously heard about Warren Buffett, this is pretty much what we're doing, whatever he's doing, we're just doing it on a smaller scale right now. We're looking for businesses doing between one to 10 million a year in sales. And yeah, you can definitely join the party. You don't need much experience or capital to do that. Uh, you just need the right attitude, motivation, and uh, you can definitely get into it. You just need the right skill set and to have the right team around you. Now, some of you guys reached out to me and, and asked me if I can be, I guess, on their team and help them buy their first business. So uh, there is a way to work with us in some to some kind of an extent. So definitely, if you want to watch our back while we buy businesses and partner with us by helping us find more deals, just see the description below. We can pretty much help you obviously use our contacts um, with everything, accountants, lawyers, financial institutions. And obviously when we buy the business, when we buy the business, this is when the real work starts. So we can be there with you, helping you grow the business as partners. So if you want to learn more on how that's doable to, to work with us, just see the description below. So to begin with, when you decide to become an investor, you need to understand there's a combination of hard work and a little, a little bit of luck as well. Um, I think persistent consistency is, is key if you want to become an investor. Um, luck is is part of it but I try not to focus on that because I can't really control my life I can control everything else and I think luck um, obviously I'm not the person who said it but luck is when um, when you work hard you find the opportunities I don't remember the exact sentence but basically work hard and you have more luck pretty much it that's what I'm trying to focus on so I try to focus on bringing in more opportunities getting myself or learning more skills in order to then apply them into different businesses that I'm looking to or just have access to more businesses to look to in order to decide who are the best to, to invest into. Like the people who invested in, in Facebook or, or Twitter or Uber, like the biggest companies out there right now, they trust me that those weren't the only deals they looked at. They probably looked at thousands of deals or even more just to pick that one unicorn. They had their failures as well. They invested in some deals that didn't go anywhere. but. All they needed is the right luck that met the, their skill set. Met so those investors build skill set, build track record over the years, and then they found a luck or opportunity to find the opportunity, like investing in a company like Uber, for example. But obviously, that didn't happen in a day. It took them many times, decades, in order to build their track record, to build um, themselves to a point where an, an entrepreneur like someone who decided to create a company like Uber would even go and approach those investors to, to put money into those deals. So obviously that didn't happen in a day, but you can build that over time. And that's when you have awesome opportunities. So as long as you're patient, as long as you're willing to put the work, as long as you're okay with the ups and downs of becoming an investor and just being involved in business in general, uh, then you're good. Now, overall, most businesses won't, they won't say that they're for sale. At least let's with the side, type of businesses that we're looking to buy. We're looking to buy businesses, ideally from baby boomers, people who are looking to retire. Um, just because we like those type of businesses, they're stable and providing good cash flow. Maybe the upside is not as exciting as investing in a tech company. Um, at the same time, I think the stability and the, the smoothness and the easiness or effortless ways to buy those businesses, I, I prefer it at this stage. Obviously, maybe in the future, and I, I'm still at the point where I'm putting some money aside into uh, startups opportunities just because I think it's fun at the same time for monthly sustainable cash flow and just for wealth building opportunities I'd rather go on sustainable businesses businesses that exist in for a while just because um, I find it um, first of all more rewarding in a way that I know that I can get into a business that um, all the time from my experience have good people involved with it like I said in my past videos people are sometimes own those businesses for many many years why can they go and provide them a better or even the only retirement opportunity for them? So for me, I find it more, I guess, suitable to my existing, um, I guess, choice and, and options in life. Um, moving forward in the, in the future, maybe I'll just get bored from that. I'll have enough monthly cash flow, enough, I guess, portfolio of companies or some kind of a holding company 
then I'll, then I'll just want to go and invest into startups. Um, I find technology, um, I don't think if excitement is the word, I just don't like the fact that things change in all the time there. I just don't um, like to always keep track on new technology and what changed and what's better and what this. I just like to have good fundamentals to go into a business that I know will exist in 20, 30 years even. And just as long as I know that at least within myself, as long as I focus on the good fundamentals, then I can grow those businesses versus if you go into technology, you really need to understand what are the changes in the sector in the technology. And then if you're not up to uh, up to the T to the point and and understand all the differences, you can just literally destroy yourself or have a very different business within a few months. And if you're not there up to date, you basically can destroy yourself. And I'm saying that as someone who had technology businesses before and I know that I, I had to shut down a few businesses just because technology changed. I was dependent on, on a specific platform to provide those kind of revenues or traffic to my companies. And the moment that they change, if I literally just miss the uh, few nuances in a few minutes, you can literally shut down uh, a million dollar business in a matter of months. And I just rather not experience that at least not unless I assume that risk in advance. So obviously people who invest in startups, many times they know that just one out of 10 of their investment will bring them back their, their capital anymore. Um, as long as they understand that and expect that, that's all good. Um, I'm not at a stage that I want to put all my life into something like that. Now, as an investor or someone looking, we're going to look to buy businesses, invest into businesses, you need to, I guess things you need to take into consideration is the fact that you're going to have expenses, you're going to have time invested into that process. Um, many people that I know want to be investors or even investing in businesses, they're not doing it full time, they're just doing it part time. So they have like their main job and then they're just putting money passively into different investment on the side. Uh, but either way, you need to understand it's, it's also investment on your of your time and money many times. I mean, even if it's just like travel costs, you many times need to travel somewhere to meet the, the business that you want to invest in or buy. Um, many times it's to pay to accountants and lawyers to help you with due diligence. If you don't have the right systems, you can lose a lot of money that way. Uh, with our firm, we know how to find those consultants to work with us only on success fees, which means we pay them and we pay them really good uh, I guess fees if and when the deal go through. So if you don't know how to, I guess, do those things, you can lose a lot of money just by working on finding the deal. And that's uh, a lot of money you can waste and a lot of time that you can waste. So you gotta make sure you understand how to, to navigate those things. So you will do at least your research in, in the, I guess, the cheapest way possible to save yourself costs or capital that you can just invest in the business that you already bought to maybe put in some more work and capital to grow the business versus spending too much capital that you don't need to spend into many times just the research. Now, the biggest thing with people that I see who want to become investors is just the fact that if you want to do this full time, you need to, I guess, consider the fact that you won't get a salary for the time that you look for the deal. Um, people who come to me want to get to the space of buying businesses. They say to me, hey, um, I'm, I don't care about quitting my job and look for a deal. And I'll just take the money out of the deal as soon as I buy it, which is all good. I, I appreciate the fact that you want to commit to it and do it full time. It's great. Uh, but you just need to take into consideration the fact that, hey, I'm used to getting X amount of salary each month. And now if I'm quitting my job and all I'm doing is looking for a business, how long can I sustain myself before I find the deal? And you need to really consider with yourself if you're accepting that emotional, I guess, um, not even ups and downs, just the fact that, hey, I'm not going to have income coming in. I'll have maybe emotional issues that I'm just not certain if things going to go up. And when you have that kind of emotional things going on with you, you might get into a deal not from the right place. You might get into a deal from needing the deal and a scarcity thing, and you might buy the business uh, just pay too much for it or just buy the deal with the wrong terms. So I think that having a nice fundamentals of uh, at least some kind of an income that you know you can live for for at least the next year would definitely create some kind of stability for you to then fully commit yourself full time into this. Like I know people who quit their job and a little literally relied on their wife or, or spouse or, or whatever or their family members to to provide their basic lifestyle so they could focus full time on finding the deals, which I think it's, 
it's something that, again I'm, I'm really I really appreciate that fact I think that committing something to something 100% is definitely going to make sure you're getting better results versus someone who just going to put a few minutes here and there at the same time I think that you need to find with yourself the combination of you quitting your job completely and you understanding that you need to uh, finance your uh, I guess basic cost of living somehow um, at the same time you need to understand that there, like, what's the worst case that can happen? Let's say you quit your job and within a few months you find out, hey, I, I didn't find a deal yet and I need to have capital to live from. Like the worst, worst case scenario, you can just go back to your job or find even a better job many times. Again, I don't want you to ever do that. I want your goal should be to find your first deal as soon as possible. At the same time, I think that by making a, a decision that is 100% committing into something, always considering the worst case scenario you're going to really make you comfortably feel comfortable with yourself that you're actually doing the right thing you're going toward your, towards your dream you're going towards the path that you want to do something that you want to do in life which is to buy businesses and you understand hey worst case scenario nothing wrong but i think that burning the boat and really leaving no option behind is, is amazing and understanding that the worst case scenario is still okay would allow you to really i guess get the best results out there I think when you decide to be an investor, um, many, I know people who decided to go into the space of buying businesses and they literally went out and raised capital in order to finance that research part. So they go out there to investor, they raise capital that will allow them to leave, um, literally just do their day to day stuff and even take a salary from that research. Now, obviously the money that they raised from investors will then many times translate into equity in those businesses. So that's kind of like a win-win for everyone. Uh, but it's up to you. It's a decision that you need to make. Most people that I know, if they want to go out there and raise capital for those type of things, first of all, it's going to be harder for you to raise capital just for the research part before you even have a deal. And secondly, that's a time that you wasted on raising capital to do something, uh, to, to basically start your research. So instead, maybe if you can finance yourself or at least the first month or two, I would go out there, look for a deal first, and then maybe go with that deal to investors to show them, hey, here's our, here are the type of deals that I think we can find. Can you help me buy those businesses? Or if not those businesses specifically, maybe you can help me um, finance my living until I find a deal. Many people that I know want to get into the space of buying businesses, becoming an investor. Uh, first of all, obviously you need to understand what type of businesses do you want? Where are you going to find those deals? Uh, I know many people don't want to get into the space to so decide to bring in partners with them, which I think it's, it, it's really cool. You just need to understand that every partner that you bring in means you need to share the profits with him as well. It also means double the expenses. So if there are travel costs to somewhere, it means double expenses. Um, if you have flights, obviously, uh, at the same time, if you have expenses like accountants, lawyers, again, I don't suggest you pay those people unless those, it's on success fee. But even like office space, if you decide to rate, the, rate an office, Many times those fees can, I guess, split between you guys, which is cool. The fact that both of you can bring in different experiences, different backgrounds can help a lot. Just if you have an engineering background um, and if your partner have a construction background, it means you can focus on two different sectors and really be efficient in those sectors and really bring, I guess, value when you talk to those business owners or even if one of you just have um, a finance experience or one of you have some kind of legal experience, I think any background is good, which can come either from a partner or just other consultants or advisors or just dream team that you decide to bring with you uh, to the table on, on each deal. I think what, what's really good with a partner is that you have support, sometimes emotional support, sometimes is all you need is someone to literally be your back and tell you, hey, we're doing good, let's continue. Um, so I think it's, having a partner is going to really prepare you to the ups and downs. Because many times when you do something on your own for the first time, if you don't have someone next to you to tell you, hey, you're doing fine, just continue with it. This is like literally one sentence sometimes from the right person can determine if you're going to continue with something or not. So sometimes just having someone next to you on your side telling you, hey, you're doing fine, let's do it, is, is all you need, which I, I, I really, I'm, I'm definitely on, on I highly suggest it to, to have a partner with you, yeah. And when you have a partner or not, you need to make, again, if you want to get into the space, make decisions. Are you going to focus locally? Are you going to focus on maybe international deals? If you're going to decide to focus on international deals, it means 
more cost for traveling. That means you spreading yourself into more, I guess, locations and looking at many more deals. So if you focus on just your local city and you decided, hey, I'm just gonna look at construction deals in my city versus you decided that I'm gonna focus on also a different country, that means tons of more opportunities to look for. And then it means just more work on filtering those deals, more expenses on potentially travel there. Um, I think ideally, if you have enough businesses locally, definitely focus on your local deals first, just because first of all, your travel costs are gonna be much cheaper. Uh, secondly, the fact that it's going to be, because your travel costs are cheaper, it means you can visit those owners face to face from the get go, which means you can build rapport much better. Um, I think you can build rapport on the phone, but I think it's much better for you to build rapport face to face. I think it's going to add much more value to you and them. It's just someone, if he's going to sell his million dollar business, you will want to see you eventually, especially if he's not, even if he's motivated. Um, I guess it depends on the type of motivation and how motivated it is, but ideally if he's not desperate to sell, he will want to see you eventually. So I think the earlier you see him, the better. Now as for expenses, I guess before you own the business, most of your expenses are going to be on originating the deal. So if you're going to go to brokers or you're going to go directly to business owners, like I said, brokers, you won't have that much of expense unless you pay the broker or some kind of companies to help you find deals. If you're going to approach deals directly, so it means sending letters, going to events, things like that, you need to consider those expenses too. So even just some of those events, you might need to pay them. Sending letters will cost you some money. Um, so you need to consider all those things when you prepare yourself to, to become an investor and get into the space of, of buying businesses. One thing you can do is obviously budget your expenses and, and make sure, hey, here's the budget I have to search those companies. Maybe here are the, um, I guess, companies or services that I can pay for to help me. Ideally, find interns. If you're gonna position yourself as a legit company, you can bring in interns and people to pretty much work for you for free to help you find those deals. I think it's definitely something you need to consider. People will just do work for you, like, like the little things, like even sending letters to people or just, um, answering phone calls or just filtering initial deals first. Um, you obviously want to do the, the actions that are after the first initial filter phase. So, and obviously if you decide to go to events, you should go to events. You need to be the phone person. If you're going to talk to the business owner, you need to be the one talking to him directly. Maybe your intern can be the one asking the initial questions just to filter quickly through the, through the deal based on criteria you're giving. Uh, but again, those are just all diff little different things you need to take into consideration. I'm just literally just throwing out there a few ideas for you to, to understand and be prepared for when you're going to look into a deal. Obviously, you'll need to take into consideration, like I said before, um, accounting fees and legal fees. Like many people I know pay a lot of money to accountants and lawyers before they even have a deal. Uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's worth it. I think you like it, it's a bit sad to see. I know people who spent literally multiple six figures on due diligence on deals that they never closed. And I think that if they just learned or knew about this channel even earlier, they knew that they could go out there and find the right accountants and lawyers to work for them on success fees if they have the right deal and the right team behind them. Um, so I, I think it's it just it's fortune to see people literally spending sometimes their life saving on, on legal fees and accounting fees on deals that they just didn't buy just because they didn't know better. So in general, the process can be really simple or complex if you just never did it before. Um, like anything in life, you know, the first time you do anything in life, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna do some, uh, I guess just have some hiccups in the world. So you just need to be prepared for it. And ideally just have someone around you did those things before just to, I think having the option to call someone to ask, even just basic questions can sometimes be, you know, just be completely, can really change your, your path into into anything. I think having someone to go into, just like I said before, sometimes just to go and listen to someone who will tell you, hey, you're doing fine, just continue executing. Because when you have that certainty behind you, that's sometimes all you need to achieve results. Um, and another thing I need to, I guess, really pay attention to is the fact that I know many people who, when they decide to go into the space of buying businesses, they go and register a company as soon as possible. They try to look all official, they go out there and try to build a website, sometimes it costs them thousands of dollars. I think it's it's very important to look official. At the same time, I know people who wasted months before they started approaching business owners just because they thought about what business name they will have. Like with me, ABD Assets, the only reason I chose this name is I was literally, I was thinking what name should I choose? 
let's let's go through the ABC A B and I don't know I just said A what can I find with A B uh, can I find something with B um, C no maybe A B D A B D sounds good I knew I might want to add assets or group or whatever into their name so I was like A B yeah, let's let's do A B D asset sounds sounds good I think maybe I thought maybe that's a let's do A B D group or something like that um, and, and then I just picked one I just looked at the domains out there and I just literally I told my friend to put some one page website and I, I've done it within a day and still that's the only website I have literally just a page to, to show some of the names we have some of the basic information about us just to have some kind of a front but in the end of the day no one really care about the website that you have about your company no one really care about your name people care about the value you can add and, and I guess the type of deals you can do and how you present yourself about your track record obviously if you have a track record and you have the experience um, no one gives a shit about the name that you have on the door no one cares about it trust me just all you need to do is go out there present yourself the right way and then you'll be positioned as, a, as the legit investor and buyer I guess the only thing with those websites and things like that I think the, the main reason for me to have a website is literally just to have some kind of a brochure to show people hey this is what we're doing in, in like a few sentences instead of me telling that uh, on the phone or in email all the time I just tell them hey look on my site here's the this is what we're doing I think another important thing to have when you have a website is just to have your domain name uh, when you have an email you want to have an email with a domain name when you have an email with a gmail I think you can be okay with it I just think it, it looks less professional nowadays especially so I guess nothing wrong with spending like a few bucks on, on a domain and an email it's literally just a few bucks a month and you can create websites nowadays for literally uh, I don't know, probably really cheap. Just just ask one of your friends to, to create your one page website. I mean, heck, you could probably do it for like 500 bucks or, or even less. Like like I said, I, I had a friend who just did it for me uh, because he's a friend, but uh, I wouldn't spend more than 500 bucks on all that, I guess, positioning online when you just start. I think also with more expenses when you try to get into these spaces, don't, don't be to rush to, to do those expenses. Like let's say you have a deal internationally and yes, maybe you need to take a flight and visit there, but don't ideally find a few more deals at that city. And then when you have a flight, remember you have accommodation to pay for, you have obviously flights back and forth. So if you have a flight somewhere, make sure you have at least a few meetings so you don't waste, uh, let's say fly to a different country to just one meeting and come back in the same day or the next day, just to come back next week for a different meeting. You see what I mean? Just Try to be productive with your research as well. Don't don't spend too much money that you don't need to spend. It's like, I guess, just a normal uh, personal financing rules that you don't need to, you don't need to act like a, like a fool when you just start. You need to be really paying attention to your budget. And then it just, I guess when you're gonna move forward, it's gonna, again, build you just better fundamentals with yourself and with businesses that you're gonna own. You don't wanna have your general manager in the business that you'll buy spending random, um, amounts of money on different things that are not really necessary, right? So treat yourself the same way and then people will see the way you treat yourself in those businesses that you'll buy. So yeah, to prepare to this space, remember, budget yourself for at least a while. At least, I would say initially budget yourself if you decide to do it full time, have a budget for at least one year or one year. I think having a budget for one year is good to begin with and deciding, hey, for one year, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna focus on this full time. I'm gonna look for deals, talk to businesses, have flights, whatever needed to close those deals. I think um, being prepared really well with con consultants and advisors, especially in the legal and the finance um, areas, you need to really be prepared and understand that with fees, if you don't know how to structure them well, you'll need to uh, cover all those fees. So make sure you have the right systems and terms in place when you look into deals and doing your due diligence. Um, and yeah, just enjoy the process. Remember, you're going to talk to lots of prospects, lots of businesses, different sectors, obviously depends on your ideal deal. Many times, lots of locations. Um, you're going to have a legit excuse to travel to different places on your business because this is what you do. You're going out there, look for businesses. Enjoy the process as long as you're going to enjoy it. And remember, be, <coughs> sorry, be, be willing to give up on a deal. Don't be needy or desperate or just, on just one deal. Remember, there are tons of deals out there there are only few buyers like us. So be picky with the deals that you want. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for, for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you didn't yet. Let me, let me know what you think and hit the, the notification button um, so you won't uh, miss any new videos. And I hope you enjoyed it and I'll, I'll see you soon.